Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Don't come for me, I already know. I haven't done a video in probably a month, I wanna say. Um, forgive me. <laughs> I've just been busy spending time with family. Um, I will say this in my defense. I did have a video that I was recording, but just something wasn't right with the footage. It was very off, it was very blurry. Um, I tried to do it with my camera and total fail. Like it just, it did not look like it was good quality. So I decided to chuck that footage and just go ahead and make a new video. And what better video to make than a highly requested one, which is about my tatas. <laughs> <laughs> so, most of this video is going to be directed toward my ladies who are into surgery. And if you are not, I mean, feel free to exit because it's pretty much what it's going to all be about. You know what I mean? And if that doesn't interest you, why waste your time? But before we begin, if you would please comment, like, and subscribe. That way you are notified anytime I drop a new video. And as you can see, I'm not as consistent anymore, but I will try to get back on board. So let's get into it. All right, so let's just take it back from the very beginning as to why I had a breast augmentation. So for those of you that know me from before, I'm pretty sure you can tell. Um, and for those of you that don't, I had the chest of a little boy. Like, I'm not even joking you. There was nothing there. Even after wearing, like, a push-up bra, nada. Like, I needed something. I It was hard to wear shirts because literally it looked like a little boy was putting on girl clothes. I mean, other than my face, if it wasn't for my face, you would honestly think I, I was a little boy just because I had the shape of a little boy. And you know, whatever to each their own, maybe some people like that, but I, I didn't, you know, I wanted to feel more feminine. On top of not having a booty, I had no boobs. Like I was not blessed in any area, like at all. Like my family was blessed in the booty, I was not. So anyways, to make matters worse, okay, I can sit here and say like, okay, they were like, what I did have, they, at least they were like perky. But once I had children, I think we all know what happens to our tatas when we have children. They droop. Okay, there's just no getting around it. You take up the bra and they droop. You can't fix it. All you gotta do is just get your breasts done. So after having my two gorgeous children, um, I actually, wait, I had, what made me want to get the breast augmentation was because I had a little like taste of what it was like to have boobs when I got pregnant because, you know, we fill up with milk and I didn't want to let it go. I did not want to let go of the fullness that I had that experience, right? And so that's what got me thinking like, man, I've had two kids, like, why not? Like, I, I want this. I don't want to get pregnant again to have like that fullness and that fullness and to like feel feminine but man like what can I honestly do to have that happen light bulb get your breasts done so that's what kind of got me into got me thinking about doing a breast augmentation so as for the information my doctor my doctor is amazing honestly I was recommended this doctor through my friend. Um, she had her breasts done by him and I fell in love with her breasts. I was like, girl, they look phenomenal. And I was like, this is gonna be my doctor. Um, I went to go s speak to him and honestly, I felt so comfortable. So yes, my doctor was Dr. Sabrinak. Um, he has an office in Warsaw, Indiana and in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, I did most of my visits in Warsaw because it's closer. And then the day of surgery, I went to Fort Wayne because that is where, or at least when I went, that is where he worked out of. Um, but I mean, it was only an hour and a half drive for me, so it wasn't too bad. The price I paid, which I am, I'm almost certain it might have gone up just because 
things are not as cheap as they used to be, right? Or who knows? I could be wrong. It could be about the same price. I paid $4,999. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't just add the extra dollar to make it 5000 even. But no, I mean, whatever. You save a dollar. You save a dollar. Um, I did get saline. Um, they do offer silicone. Well, in most uh, practices, they offer saline, silicone, and I think they have something called like gummy, or you can even use your own fat. But again, I was super skinny, um, didn't have a lot of fat on me, and it was very hard for me to keep on fat. So I just didn't think that that would be something that would be good for my body because I would work off fat very quick, depending on how much I would work out, which I didn't really work out that much. Back then, I was just naturally skinny. Um, so yeah, I didn't think the fat transfer was going to be a good fit for me. And then um, back then, my doctor, he did not work with silicone. Um, silicone, for those that don't know, it is harder. Um, I think like the pros to it is you know, like your boobs are going to stay nice and round and like perky and just like out. But um, the cons to it is like they're hard. Like they're they're never really going to feel like natural boobs. They're just going to be like rock hard and then you have your skin over them. So my doctor told me that he does not mess with silicone or silicone. Yeah, he doesn't mess with silicone just because he doesn't like it. He doesn't like that it's hard. He doesn't like you know, it can break. You must be, you got to be hit real hard, but I'm pretty sure, like he told me that it can break on you. It can crack. And then they're going to have to like take it out and <coughs> excuse me, they're going to have to take it out and, you know, put a new one in. So he pretty much does saline only. I don't know if maybe he caught on to the trend of like gummies, maybe because it's more natural, not more natural, but it's, kind of the same as like saline um the cons of saline <clears throat> oh my gosh let me go get water uh talking about gummies and saline okay so I would think that he might have caught on to the whole gummy um implant as well because I did I did hear that those are a bit more, uh, they feel more like your breast, right? So anyways, um, with the saline, I would say that the con to it is after time, the bag will get ripples, um, like around, but you won't see them. Like if I wear a bikini or if I take off my bra, like you won't be able to tell that there's ripples or anything like that. It's just more of like a feel, but you have to like pay attention. It's not like you touch them and you're like, oh, I can feel the ripples. No, nothing like that. A good thing about saline, or at least that my doctor does, is he told me that if I ever wanted to go bigger, I could come back to the office. He could numb me up. He could cut me open in the office and pretty much stick a hose, pump some more of the saline in there and make them bigger. And instead, like if you do silicone, you have to take the whole implant out. You have to pretty much pay for the surgery again. With um, saline, if you wanted to go and get them bigger, all you have to do is pay $2,000 and you got bigger boobies. Good. So when I went in, I was kind of limited to how big my boobs could go. Obviously, I didn't want them enormous. I wanted them to fit with my body. I was tiny. Um, when I went in, uh, my doctor, he told me, he's like, okay, what are you looking for? What are you trying to achieve? Um, and let's see if I can give you what you're looking for. And I pretty much told him like, look, I'm not trying to have these huge breasts i just want something that looks natural but i want to know i want people to know that they're there you know i don't want to just waste almost five thousand dollars to you know have small boobs but i didn't want them to like come out from the side i didn't want them to look too huge for my body because mind you when i got my breasts done 
I want to say I was about maybe 110 and I am 5'4", I believe. So, I mean, I'm not super short. Um, I just was very skinny. Even like my waist, I measure, oh, sorry, I measure about 32 like in the rib area. So, I'm, I'm pretty tiny. Like, if you're searching for bras, you would know that that's like the smallest size. And even then, like my bras back then, they would fit me kind of loose. So I was, I had a very tiny frame. Right now, I'm still, I still measure out of 32, but at least like the, the, what is that called? Like the strap around, it fits me now. It's not loose anymore. So I have always had like a very small frame and he pretty much told me I don't want to go too big because um, the implant that we're going to put in you, if I fill it up too much, your boob is going to stick out from the side. It's parallel to like my torso, right? So it doesn't really like come out. And that's what his thing was. He just said that he didn't want to make them too big to where I looked like I had these huge boobs and then this tiny little waist. Okay, so when the implant was placed, when I had my breast augmentation done, um, since I was so thin, my doctor decided to put the uh, breast implant underneath my muscle. I didn't have a lot of fatty tissue in my breast and that just kind of conceals or um, it's gonna hide the ripples from the bag, right? So it was put underneath the muscle. I had, again, as I said, a full C implant. Um, and he did tell me that I think he put, I wanna say 355 cc's um, of saline. And he told me that it's not a lot. Um, most girls go closer to 500. But again, I was really tiny. And not to mention, he doesn't like to leave stretch marks on your breast because if you uh, put too much saline, if you do too much at one time, it's going to cause your skin to stretch. And with stretching comes stretch marks. So again, I had no boobies. You know, my skin was very tight up here. So he couldn't put too much without having me really stretch. And mind you, when I had my breasts done, I felt super tight. It felt like my skin was almost ripping just because I didn't have a lot there. And I mean, he he said that he did the max that he could without, um, you know, wanting to give me stretch marks. And he, he did an amazing job because I do not have one stretch mark on my boob. So that's a plus. So in preparing for my surgery, um, there's not much to do. I mean, you don't have to really stop eating anything, stop taking medications. I mean, I guess every doctor is different, but at least like from what my doctor told me, I mean, all I had to really do was go, show up, go in comfy clothes. And I mean, that's about it. There's not really too much to this surgery. Um, the only thing that they say is, you know, you can't lift anything too heavy um, because you don't want to open your stitches. And, you know, you have to wear a really ugly bra. It looks like an old lady's bra, you know, it like comes like all the way up. You're completely covered, but that is good for you. You know, if your doctor tells you to not be wearing a bra and to just let yourself heal, wrong, wrong, wrong. Because I know I've heard of some girls that have done that and it's like, you know, obviously, you have a heavier chest, you know, it's going to pull on that skin and you want to keep them as perky as possible. So even to this day, like always wear a bra. I know it feels nice. I know it feels good to be free, but the more you just let your breast hang, the sooner life will happen. Gravity will take them down and your skin is going to stretch. I try to at least for the most part, if I'm going to be up around the house walking around, I at least try to wear a sports bra um, if I don't want to wear like a regular bra, a wired bra, sorry. But um, when I go to sleep, sometimes I will take off my bra and just, you know, sleep freely because of course that's like the best feeling ever. 
but I do try to at least wear something when I'm going to be up and at it. So yeah, that's pretty much the only like aftercare that there is. You know, you want to make sure that if your doctor prescribes you um, certain creams, like there's like a cream. Um, I don't know if every doctor prescribes the same one, but my doctor did. He prescribed me a cream for the scars um, because I had, uh, I believe it was like maybe a two, maybe like an inch and a half incision underneath, un oh my gosh, underneath my breast. And um, he gave me cream for that. If you get silicone or saline, you will have to go back about every 10 years to get them redone because things happen. The bag gets old. Um, your body can start to like <clears throat> attach itself to the implant, which you don't want. I don't know if this is the same for every single girl, but from my experience, like I have always been um, very sensitive in the um, area, right? So I have heard that when you do get your breast done, there are some doctors that they go around the nipple to save you the scar underneath. But I've also heard that that can um, lead to um, like your sensitivity not being there as much. Like it's, you just kind of like lose that feeling, right? Like, you know, that arousal feeling. Don't know if that's for everybody, but I have seen a few girls where they said that, you know, that was like their go-to spot to get them in the mood. And then once they had their surgery, you know, it's just, it's not the same anymore. So I'm very glad that my doctor went underneath the breast because honestly, like, your partner is going to be the only one that really sees it. Like, even when I wear a bikini or like just a bra, you can't see it. It's like right underneath. So... Yes, I would say talk to your doctor about what their technique is, if they go around the nipple, if they cut it off, or if they um, go underneath the breast. So another thing um, I was asked about is the pain. In all honesty, <clears throat> it was probably one of my easiest surgeries. Um, I have had, I did have my nose done as well, and then obviously the first, very first video was a BBL. That was the worst surgery in my, in, in my opinion. That was the worst one for me. But um, for the breast, I don't know. I didn't feel like it was that bad. A lot of girls say that they're scared. Um, but honestly, I feel like as long as you take your pain medication, you don't really feel pain. Like you, you will feel tight you will feel kind of like heavy um what else you're gonna feel tender right but as far as pain i didn't really feel any pain i think i i took it for maybe like a week and a half i stayed very consistent and then after that i switched to i believe it was tylenol like i am a tummy sleeper right you will not I repeat, you will not be able to sleep on your stomach. There is just no way. Your boobs, even though I had saline implants, your boobs are so hard the first few months. I'm not even joking you, like they're rock hard. So after I wanna say six months, that is when I started to wear, you know, wired bras so that I could go out. But before then, I stuck to the bra that I was provided um, with at the doctor's office um, if you get silicone or saline you will have to go back about every 10 years to get them redone because things happen the bag gets old um, your body can start to like <clears throat> attach itself to the implant which you don't want now if you do your own fat you're not gonna have that issue, at least not that I know of. Again, I am no expert on breast augmentation. I'm just trying to share my experience and from what I know. I am coming up on my 10 year mark here pretty soon. So I will have to go back and get them redone, which I'm okay with. I will probably get the same size and not change a thing, but there'll be new bags. I'll have new tatas, I guess. That is pretty much the gist of it. Like, there's not too much to talk about when you're talking about 
uh, breast augmentation because it's pretty like straightforward. Um, again, I do recommend my doctor. He is amazing. I always recommend him to any girl, to any female, or just to anybody in general who is looking to get their breasts done. I always recommend him because he is he's a very good doctor. You know, he's he's good at what he does. Um, I don't know if he does anything else, but I know he does great boobies. And, you know, like, these are the girls, you know, like, 10, girl, like, come on, maybe 8 or 9 years old that I've had these done, and I feel like my boobs still look pretty good. I am wearing, like, you know, a regular bra, but, you know, even without it, my friends have told me, like, your boobies look spot on. I'm like, thank you, thank you, I know I love my tatas. <laughs> Alright, ladies, so that is going to be the end of this video. I know it was pretty short but there's not a lot to talk about when it comes to breast augmentation. It's pretty straightforward. Find a good doctor, make sure his techniques line up with what you like, and check out the pictures, make sure that his work falls in line with what you're looking for, and that's about it. Stay on your medication and wear a bra. <laughs> you wanna make sure that you are protecting your investment and yeah, I would say that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will get to all of them, I promise. If you guys do have any questions, um, if you guys would like to know anything else, feel free to shoot me a message. If you don't wanna drop a comment, if you're shy, or if you don't wanna put your business out there, and give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe because it says there's a lot of people that watch my videos that aren't subscribed. But I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your week. I'll see you later. Mwah.